So my name is David Noy, Vice President of Product Management at Veritas. I'm gonna give you kind of a quick intro about what we're doing in cloud, and then I'll take you through some of the appliance offerings that we're providing, which have a lot of cloud connectivity and cloud juice in them. Um, Veritas is an established company. It has been around for quite some time. In fact, I'm a third time Veritaser. I was in Veritas in the 90s as a developer. In 2008 to 2011, I ran uh, product management for a big part of the uh, old storage foundation products, you know, VXFS, VXVM, cluster file system. This product's still alive and well. Um, and then I came back to Veritas for a third time August of last year, after a very successful career at a very large uh, hardware manufacturer. And you might ask, why would I come back to Veritas again? And the answer is, I think Veritas has done a fantastic job of reinventing itself. I look at this as being Veritas 3.0. And it's no longer just about you know, a single set of IT infrastructure capabilities or products, but really looking at the broader trends that are happening in the ecosystem. And as we see people adopt cloud, cloud in particular, we believe that the companies that can help large enterprises, small enterprises, or even mid-sized enterprises make that transition from an on-prem world to a hybrid world or even a multi-cloud world and make that as easy as possible and as seamless as possible are gonna be the ones that win. So we've partnered very heavily with the cloud vendors, not to create impediments to people moving stuff off of our products, but to actually make it smooth. Part of the reason we can do that is because Veritas Heritage, all the, all the way back when in the 90s, when I was an engineer in Veritas, has been around software. So we build software. And we don't, you know, we do provide appliances. We have quite a robust appliance business, quite a robust hardware business to support that software. But at the end of the day, because we provide software, because we're not selling on a premise of how many spinning disks or how much uh, flash or how much compute can I drop into your environment and how much rack space can I fill up, it makes it much more easy for us to be cloud friendly. One, our products can run more easily on cloud infrastructure. Two, we're not counting on monetizing bits that we captively hold in your data center. And three, we're just much more agile as a software company. So let me walk you through a couple of slides to prove out those points. I'll just take you through, hopefully this is working. Oh, we got a nice uh, rest, uh, semantic antivirus message. So I'm gonna postpone this for four hours, okay? <clears throat> so here we go. Truth on IT, transformation. Enterprises are becoming more and more dependent on data. In fact, you could say the data is the lifeblood of an enterprise. The data is the asset that makes one enterprise more valuable than another. Now, we've seen recent incidents in the news where some of these enterprises abuse their data rights and privileges. But at the end of the day, um, there is elevated risk to having data everywhere. Data is proliferating. It's proliferating outside of the on-prem into the off-prem into one cloud, actually into multiple clouds. The number of customers we talk to actually have data not just in one cloud, but in two or even three clouds, as well as their on-prem data center. And as they need to protect that data, to make sure that that data is available in the event that something bad happens, and that something bad is completely changing. And, you know, 10 years ago, it was smoking hole, maybe uh, your data center is gone. You know, now it's some person opened up a back wall in a dev environment and all of a sudden you get ransomware coming in and everything's encrypted and how do I get back into operating mode? That threat profile is really what we help protect against. We do more than just that. We help you to actually take the data that you have and turn it into an asset that you can leverage rather than just having it sit around waiting for a bad thing to happen. Now the truth is data is the only IT asset that offers differentiated value. And the data is the data that people use or the enterprises use to create comp competitive advantages against each other. If that data is just basically, as I said, inert, waiting for something bad to happen, it's like my car. When I drive my car two hours a day, 22 hours a day, it does nothing but sit there in the parking lot. If I could turn my car into a self-driving Uber, my car would be running around 22 hours a day picking up people and generating value for me rather than just waiting for me to get done with work so it can drive me home. We want to be able to do something like that. Take the captive enterprise data that we have. We are the largest data protection company in the world. 
we've got the largest captive amount of enterprise data. And that enterprise data is changing from more of the traditional enterprise -y, uh, Oracle, SQL, uh, SAP type enterprise applications. It's starting to include things like Hadoop, um, hyperconverged uh, Nutanix data, uh, virtual machine uh, um, data, you name it. All kinds of unstructured data. Unstructured becoming actually absolutely huge. In my last career, I spent a lot of time really heavily focused on unstructured, and it's growing at a tremendous rate. People have to protect all of this stuff. All of this is critical enterprise data that differentiates your company's ability to be competitive versus another's. Now, uh, customers have some common challenges. Number one is how do they accelerate data growth? And how do they deal with accelerating data growth? Data is growing extremely fast. What do you do about that? Um, they need efficient ways, low cost ways of keeping that data and storing it for long periods of time. Storing it and protecting it. There's increasing resilient, uh, sorry, we need increased reliance on data. I need to be able to leverage my data to influence my business. I need to be able to actually look at my data and not just have it lying around waiting for an event, but be able to actually turn it into a asset that I can use to answer specific questions, to give a line of business owner some kind of insight into what their business is generating or could generate, answering those questions. There's continuous budget pressures, and this goes down back to the keeping things low cost and shifting spend to where you need it the most. Do I want to run 12 data centers? Do I want to run one? And as you consolidate data centers, do I want to have disaster recovery data centers? Do I want to use cloud public services as disaster recovery targets and have, be able to spin up infrastructure on the fly? Because maybe that's a much more low cost option for me and it makes more sense than for me to run 24 data centers around the world. <laughs> there are all kinds of intermanagement complexity, infrastructure management complexity, you operate with a cloud first mentality, that's great. But then what does that mean? How can you operate cloud first if a lot of the things that you do are on-prem, a lot of the things you do are off-prem? How do you keep track of what's where? Should it even be there? Are you violating compliance rules by doing that? And the data compliance thing is really a big issue. Particularly in EMEA, you have GDPR uh, turning on in a couple of months, which could potentially leverage multiple percentage fines of your annual revenue if you are out of compliance and somebody asks you to remove their personally identifiable information. Moreover, there are all kinds of regulated industries that have requirements around what can move where worldwide. We want to be able to help customers to answer those questions. So we're no longer positioning ourselves as just a data protection company, but really a data management and an information management company, helping customers to understand what they have where, whether it resides on-prem or off-prem. And as I said earlier, we're going to win the game if we can help people to move stuff from the on-prem to the off-prem and make that as simple as possible. So we're providing things like data trans center transformation. We're providing machine learning capabilities to help people figure out what needs to move when, what can move, what kind of data they have. Uh, we're looking at DevOps and API, basically making our products more modern in the way that people actually interact with them and use them, API driven so that they can be run either on-prem or off-prem in a more cloud-like environment. And software defined, again, even in the 90s when I was working on the Storage Foundation product, VXVM, VXFS, this was, you know, wasn't called software defined back then, but software defined gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility and agility in a world where a hardware defined solution uh, basically locks you in. That said, people still like to buy appliances. They like to buy boxes. Why? Because it takes a lot of risk and variability out of the equation. They want the insurance that if they need to, they can operate that environment on their own, on their own infrastructure. Now the cloud offers some great advantages to the, you know, the C-suite. Basically it offers that flexibility, that agility, everything that they're looking for, the ability to spend when you need it, utility-based pricing, all that great stuff. So it looks really good to a C-suite operator. But to an actual architect, whew, creates all kinds of challenges. What do I do with my old architectures? How do I move them into these new environments? Uh, how do I maintain stability? And how do I align with the line of business requirements that are being given to me, which now say that I have to keep some stuff here and move some stuff there 
and have a whole bunch of different complex relationships between my on-prem and my off-prem. We just look at a cloud outage, for example, the time that it takes for a cloud provider to get back online is one thing. They get the store, the service goes down, they got to get the root cause figured out, plan a rollout and get it back online. For the actual business that's relying on that cloud service provider, it doesn't stop here. You now have to get your apps up, but you might find a table corruption. You might have to retest your applications. And it might take hours from the time that you actually have a service interruption and the service interruption is over to the time that your applications are back up and running and actually servicing new requests. So how do you protect yourself against these things? <coughs> how do you protect yourself against data loss in the cloud? That's another big question. All of the products that you'll hear about today from us are designed to not just protect your data in the normal enterprise on-prem data center, but to extend to a cloud world where your data may consist of data that's been basically hybridized across on-prem and off-prem, and maybe fully off-prem, fully cloud native, um, and help you move from one of those modalities to the other. Now, 360 data management is what we call this, and the idea is that if data is really the lifeblood of your enterprise, we want to be able to provide you an intelligent core around discovery, classification, and policy automation, but this is really around data protection first. <clears throat> so protect that data, make it portable so I can move it between on-prem and on-prem or on-prem and off-prem. I want to provide business continuity so that it's always online and protect you against disaster recoveries. Give you digital compliance and visibility, visibility to figure out what you have where, compliance to know where you're violating rules, rules that you either set for yourself or have been set by regulatory bodies, and then do that with a storage stack because at the end of the day, when you're protecting data, you gotta put it somewhere. A storage stack that's as low cost and high performance as possible, either on-prem or off-prem. From a 360 approach, we look at that as basically see, move, protect. See is when we figure out what's there, we classify it, we make it visible to you, we can report on it. Move allows us to move it to the cloud if you need to, or between data centers, and then protect it in that cloud environment, or on-prem, or between clouds if that's what you want to do. We have a number of strategic partnerships with all the cloud vendors. Very, very uh, strong ones with the ones that are here, but there are a couple of others we have that are not listed here as well. And the key use cases is no longer just around data center backup, but as I mentioned, workload migration. So we have the ability to move uh, workloads, entire workloads from on-prem into the cloud. Disaster recovery, the ability to actually use cloud as a DR target. Uh, cloud backup, which means that we'll allow you to back up your data into the cloud and use that as your repository for backup data and then give you visibility into what you have because now you've put stuff into a number of different clouds and potentially you don't know whether you put stuff that is out of compliance or has special or special treatments or should have some sort of regulatory uh, um, uh, requirements assigned to it. That whole level of you know, protection, migration, recovery, backup and visibility is really what you need for a full cloud data management suite. And we're adding more and more capabilities as we go. We'll go through some of those as we go through some of the product updates and, and specifically. But this is just the high level. <coughs> Veritas has built leadership here and we're in doing so much more and we're building out these products every single day. They're getting better. Um, and we'll talk about some of those as I said. You know, the key use cases is you back up your data to a secondary uh, device. Now, do you want to put it to tape? Now nah, we want to go put it to cloud. How do I do that? How do I make it simple? How do I make it fast? How do I make it cheap? When should I delete that data instead of even sending it to the cloud? How about workload migration? Can I take it from the off-prem and move it to the on-prem? Well, how about disaster recovery? All of those are provided by different services. We have a resilient pl resiliency platform, the Veritas Resili Resiliency Platform, which helps you do DR to the cloud, a cloud mobility product for migration to the cloud. Net Backup with Cloud Catalyst allows you to send deduplicated data directly to the cloud so you don't have to rehydrate it and dehydrate it. That keeps it small, which means you pay less for your data transfer fees and it gets there faster. 
Oh, and by the way, instead of tape, you can go send it into uh, an Access Appliance as an on-prem, very low-cost, disk-based uh, backup target. All of this integrates with the data visibility capabilities and classification and helps you figure out where you're in compliance or not in compliance based on the industries that you're in. So that's kind of the high-level offering.